recommendations and this is maybe this is part of the possibility of the teacher and the curriculum. So it's, it's possible they don't speak a lot and they don't have enough confidence in speaking because our curriculum do not actually does not actually emphasize on speaking. If we refer to the to the, to the curriculum for schools, for senior high schools and also uh, junior high schools, um, I, I will say that the emphasis is more on reading. So uh, I think that's also one of the reasons why then uh, students have very limited opportunities of speaking practice uh, in the in schools. I think um, not a lot of opportunities are provided for uh, for speaking. Uh, it's more on reading and grammar. That's what at least that's what I have what I have experienced yeah, when I did my my schooling and also from my daughter yeah, she's in uh, senior high school. And, um, I remember I, I also assisted her with some exercises and it's again it's more on reading and um, and structure. And then the examination system does not emphasize oral skills. I think um yes we all know yeah and, and I think it's also understandable yeah, in, in, in a recent context because we have so many students and it's very difficult, of course, to assess students' speaking skill through the national exam yeah, because well, it will cost a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of things, yeah, not only money but also people and, and energy because then uh, all teachers should have the standard of how to measure speaking and I think it's, it's not easy. If we refer to the to the IELTS speaking test, for instance, um, they are trained uh, in a very rigorous way so that they can produce reliable scores. Yeah, and I think yeah, it's it's a very difficult issue in our context to assess uh, speaking in the national exam. Um, teachers' limited English proficiency. I think we also have to admit here that a lot of people teach English, but through Bahasa Indonesia. I am a person who hates the idea that if you want to teach English, then you have to speak English all the time. Because if you don't do that, then your students won't actually learn. Um, that's that's my my belief. Yeah, um, and I always say to my students, um, you can remember when you were a small baby, you didn't speak any language. Um, even you couldn't call your mom, ibu, mama, or whatever. Yeah, but because your environment um, teach you or or force you to use the language, then you acquire the language um, without a lot of effort. So that's that's what I always say to my to my students. Yeah, if yeah, they they sometimes also complain to me because I teach. Uh, they think I teach quite a difficult subject like uh, test and evaluations, and um, sometimes they don't understand. But I just I keep uh, speaking in in English. But also I have um, I have an agreement from them from the very beginning that uh, the medium of instruction will be full um, English. But I know, yeah, a lot of teachers um, in our context uh, in Indonesia, not all of them uh, use English when they teach in the classroom. And I think you can also refer to your own experience, yeah. Do you always use English, English, full English in the classroom or, or how? So if you want to teach speaking to your students, I think you also have to start from yourself, yeah. Um, and then teaching speaking as repetitions or memorization. Um, I think uh, we are also familiar, as English teachers, we are familiar with uh, the, uh, drilling method, yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, we, uh, we also have some resistance to this, uh, to this method, yeah, because um, students can memorize, but then they may not really understand uh, the meaning or the context of, uh, of the dialogue that they, uh, they memorize, for instance. Um, also, no interactions, no information exchange is is is, uh, it is quite common. Yeah, I, at least uh, I knew from my observations to a lot of schools, uh, which I did from my dissertations last time. So, um, teacher centered is still there in in our context, and of course, yeah, in that way, then uh, interaction is less observed, and, and of course, then. Um, it will also affect uh, our ability in speaking. So, how to get your students to talk? Um, so, of course, yeah, um, we 
we refer to some characteristics of uh, of a good speaking class. Of course, students have to talk a lot, yeah. So because uh, that's that's uh, the moment for them to actually have the practice. That's the opportunity for them to learn, yeah. And opportunity to learn is a very important aspect in teaching and learning process because students can be in the classroom, but it's very, it's, it's, also, it's possible that they don't actually learn. So they are in a speaking class, but it's also possible that they actually don't talk. So uh, of course we have to create uh, the classroom in such a way um, that students have the opportunity to talk a lot. Um, and of course in that way we have to engage students yeah, in, in such a way that everybody can participate in the lessons. Um, I think it's also important to uh, to reflect, yeah, to, to reflect whether we have equal attention to all students. I know we have the challenge of having a big class, and it's not easy to pay attention to all students. So in that case, I uh, my idea is to actually have more attention to students with lower uh, ability because they are the ones who need more attention. And of course, in that case, then we can uh, ask the uh, high ability students to uh, to lead the discussions. But uh, as I said earlier, we really have to pay more attention to students with lower uh, ability. So um, when we have a lot of students' engagement, then of course we hope that motivation is high, so all students can uh, participate. They are attracted to participate uh, in the lessons. And then uh, language is of an acceptable level. So of course we we have to make sure that we use language which are languages, words, vocabularies which are within students' uh, coverage. So in that case, then we can refer to the topics, yeah, to so, so some topics which are close to uh, students' uh, daily life. I think I have to be quick, yeah? I don't have a lot of time. Okay, so what students uh, need to speak fluently? Um, they need to have authentic practice, it should be meaningful. Um, so the task should represent or should be close to their daily life. Like, uh, well, we can decide some topics. Yeah? For instance, um, uh, daily, daily activity is, is part of their life. Yeah? They do some daily activities. Um, so the topics should be interesting and again within their uh, coverage. Yeah. So uh, they also need some vocabularies. They need to have grammar, good grammar. They, they need to have uh, knowledge of the quiet grammar and also the pronunciation. And that's what we have to provide before we actually ask them to do some tasks. And then, of course, yeah, clear instructions. And I will, I, will, I have uh, my next slide uh, explaining about what is meant by clear instructions. So first, we have to decide the purposes and connect them with students' daily life. If the topic is about, let's say, the topic is about uh, introductions, yeah, and uh, we can we can raise some questions to connect the topic and students' daily life. We can ask, for instance, um, uh, in what situations you need to introduce, let's say. So of course, that, you know, you, you can imagine um, the situations where they have the actions of introducing to uh, each other. And then give enough input or modeling. This is a very important uh, aspect as well, uh, because modeling is actually a strategy where or uh, by which students can do the tasks. Um, you can provide video or you can ask some students to actually practice in front of the others and then explain why they do so. So that's that's part of the uh, input or the modeling, and you can also you should also explain some vocabularies and tenses used um, in certain situations. Um, provide good, good scaffolding and enough time for uh, thinking. So you start from easy uh, exercise to more difficult uh, ones, and you should you shouldn't forget to give sufficient time for your students to do uh, the task. Um, also, appropriate feedback and avoid over corrections, yeah, because students will not like to have to, to hear um, a lot of corrections from the teachers. Yeah, um, you can at the end of the of the sessions you can wrap up some common mistakes uh, and then you can explain to the students in um, in, in general. Okay. Um, so, what mistakes often happen? So, you do not provide enough input and no authentic materials and shared knowledge. Yeah. So, in that case, then uh, of course the students will not have the model to actually 
uh, use when they do their exercises. We have provided a PCM vocabulary beforehand. This is also a possibility. Um, of course, we won't be able to ask the students to do the task if they don't have enough uh, vocabulary or give limited opportunity for students to speak the target language. Yeah. So that's uh, it's, a, it's a very important point that we have to bear in our mind when we come to the class. We have to provide the opportunity for the students to practice using the target language. Uh, or we do not monitor students' performance and provide feedback. So feedback is very, very important. Yeah. So, um, of course, yes, you need to provide feedback and, and the feedback can be according to the criteria you want your students to master. Um, okay, um, what a speaking class should look like. Um, how many more minutes do I have, Bu, uh, Ibu Moderator? Hello? You still have 10 minutes, ma'am. Okay, so in developing uh, speaking activities, okay, so uh, in the traditional classroom, speaking practice often takes in the form of drills, yeah, which uh, one person asks a question, another gives an answer. Uh, but in a communicative uh, way of teaching, um, we need to provide real communications, yeah? So, um, because we know uh, speaking is actually used to, to communicate, and of course, uh, when you communicate, you need to convey some uh, messages, or you obtain some information, or expressing uh, an opinion. So that's what uh, you need to create uh, in terms of the exercises uh, to the students. So we, we can have brainstorm, we can have jigsaw, we can have role play, or we can have problem solving, or debates, and drama, or storytelling, and presentations. Um, speaking games. I, I think I, I don't have to explain one by one. You can read the slides uh, on how to do this uh, different exercise and I'll go to writing because we don't have... Uh... So, now uh, let's begin with uh, with the concept of writing. So, it's the yeah, act of picking up correct sentences and transmitting them through the visual medium as marked on uh, paper. And writing is a way of communicating a message to a reader for some purposes, such as expressing oneself, providing information, persuading readers, and creating a literary work. And I think in a simple way, we can define writing as a practical means for fixing or consolidating various language components. Yeah. So in, in writing, of course, we need to, like speaking, we need to have the vocab, we need to, have, we need to understand syntax in writing and also grammar, of course. Um, so, do you want to, do you want your students to write well? Of course, yeah, we want our students to write well. And there is a, a good <laughs> proverb. Um, so, if you want your students to write well, you need to, uh, to give them books. You need to ask them to read a lot of books, yeah, in order to be fluent in writing. The same case with speaking. If you want your students to be fluent, you also have to ask them to listen a lot. So why do we teach writing? I think, yeah, we can help students express their ideas through our thoughts, yeah, in words, and help students communicate thoughts or ideas to others. Um, we can also encourage them to engage with the text to deepen their understanding of the content. Um, writing is a fundamental part of engaging in professional, social, community, and academic activities. Yeah, if your students want to continue uh, their further studies, then of course they need to be able to write an uh, academic paper. So, uh, writing has been considered to be a neglected skill, like like speaking as well. Yeah. So, often uh, the com the complaints is that the classes are too large, uh, or the teachers don't have enough time uh, to actually write yeah, for themselves, or they also may consider that they are not a good writer. So, how can we teach um, writing? So. Is there any best way? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there is no consensus on what is actually the best way to teach uh, writing. But we have to understand that process is very, uh, very important. Uh, students need time, place, and of course also reasons uh, to write. 
and like speaking, also good instructions is crucial as well. Because the key to students' learning to write well is actually good uh, instructions. Um, you can have this kind of simple uh, plan of instructions here. We can ask them to have rewrite, write, revise, edit, and publish like this one. Or you can also have uh, something like this, generating ideas through brainstorming and then uh, publishing information based on decided topic area. So you, you can ask students to create graphic organizers to, uh, to lay out their ideas before they start uh, writing. Yeah? And then, of course, uh, writing uh, does not finish from the, uh, the first writing. Of course, students need to revise and edit them before they have the final draft uh, ready. So, and these are some of the revising uh, methods, yeah, uh, adding, rearrange, rearranging, removing, and replacing. Um, so, what I did, what I do uh, with my with my writing class, this I also teach uh, writing. So, start with brainstorming students' previous experiences or knowledge related to the topic of writing. Uh, and then connect the lesson. Yeah, it's, it's very important to connect the lessons because uh, it can lead to, uh, well, we want our students to see that what they learn is something meaningful in their life. It's not only because the topic comes to that topic so that they learn, but they could also think that what they learn is something uh, really useful in their uh, life. We can ask them to discuss, uh, uh, we can discuss with them the objectives of the writing, genre, the topic of the lessons. And we shouldn't forget to give them some samples. Yeah, I, I like to give them some samples of the writing before they actually write. So they have some imaginations of what they should write, what they should uh, explain in their writing. So, yeah, um, what, I, what I normally do is uh, discuss it with them, the samples, and then how the samples are written, and whether they think it's a good samples, and they want to improve in what in what uh, paragraph, in what sentences they, they can uh, improve uh, the samples. And then we can explain the steps or the strategies to produce uh, similar facts, yeah? And of course, we also have to agree with them on assessment uh, criteria. And providing feedback is very important, yeah? Like uh, in speaking, in writing, it, it is very uh, important. So some ideas on assessment criteria. The ideas, the organizations, or the word choice, or lexical resources, and then the grammatical uh, accuracy, and also sentence coherence. It's, it's like um, the criteria used uh, in IELTS. Yeah? So, um, if you have uh, too many students, I know it's not easy to to provide feedback for the students' writing. So you can use some uh, ways of uh, written feedback, providing written, written uh, feedback. Uh, for instance, you can use selective correct corrections. So you focus only on sentence and spelling, or you can use sign posting, so indications of where students have the mistakes, and then they have to improve or they have to revise yeah, based on the sign posting that you already made for them. Or you can also create a correction code, letters or symbols to show different types of mistakes. For some reasons, G for grammar, or S for spelling, uh, and so on. You can also have uh, students who have individual self-correction. So students reread their work and correct mistakes. Yeah. Or you can also use peer correction, so students work in pair and identify their friends' uh, mistakes. Or you can also have whole class corrections. I also like to do this, yeah, the whole class corrections. So teachers select common mistakes and then discuss in the class. So you show them, you collect some of the mistakes of your students, and then you, what, what I normally do, and then I, I will uh, write in the slides and I, I will explain them how those sentences are incorrect and how to make them uh, into correct ones. So this is one of the writing feedback which I give, which I gave to my students. I know it takes a long, long, long time to do this, especially if you have a lot of students, yeah. 
but for writing, of course, yeah, it, it is very important to provide the feedback because uh, this is also part of the way how they learn and how they can improve um, their writing. Okay. I think uh, I nearly come to the end. So, of course, yeah, technology is the answer to uh, the challenge that we are facing right now. And I will just, this is just sharing of what I normally use. Yeah, and of course, I I, uh, I believe you you know some more uh, applications or platforms which you can use to deal with the current uh, challenge. So, Google Meet, I think, yeah, that uh, is an easy uh, platform which we can use because uh, we can just have uh, Google Meet from our Gmail or WhatsApp group can also be used for easy communication such as sharing link of the Gmail or posting assignment or any communications yeah and Zoom like what we are using right now is also useful as well but if you use the free one then you can only have 40 minutes but um, if you have the paid one of course then you can arrange whatever, uh, whatever you like here. So, um, so what I normally again, this is actually only uh, based on what I normally do. So I use Gmail or Zoom, which link is shared through WhatsApp group to explain the materials and have discussions or interactions with the students. So I think it's very important to always have interactions with students. Um, and I think uh, Gmail is a very uh, practical app, yeah? and also we don't have to. We don't have to feed after 40 minutes yeah, with the gym, uh, different from Zoom, where we don't have the paid one, then we can only use for 40 minutes. Uh, we can also group them, uh, group them to do their task. Yeah, this is to do their task, actually. I miss that too. Um, and depending on the topic and the type of performance you decide, you can ask them, you can ask each group to create a performance video. Yeah, that's uh, for speaking. I think um, it's also possible to have uh, to collect some uh, videos from your students, but I think you need to de decide in advance how many performance uh, your students have to do in a semester. Because if you if you ask them every week to provide uh, to have a video. It all, it's also difficult for you to provide the feedback. So I think that's what you have to agree with your students on how many performances they need to have yeah, during these um, situations. Um, and then you need to provide the feedback. So use Jimmy to discuss students' works and provide feedback. Uh, last semester I taught uh, micro teaching, and that's what I asked to my students. They had to uh, they had to create. I think four videos, yeah, uh, four or five, I forget, maybe five, yeah, so five, uh, the first one, um, uh, and I used the two of the five as the, the midterm and the final uh, task, but of course, um, we have to provide uh, the feedback, and I know it takes time, yeah, but I think, yes, uh, we have, we just have to provide um, the feedback. And then the right uh, Maybe you still have... Three minutes. Okay. Yes, I nearly come. <laughs> I'm so sorry, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Okay. So for writing, yes, you can use um, the same case. Yeah, but I think it's very important again to provide uh, the samples. Yeah, and uh, you can ask them to to write, and then of course uh, you have to uh, provide uh, feedback and write it on how to provide feedback, and you can select one of the ways. So yes, I think yes. This is I, I nearly come to the um, uh, to the end. So these are some of useful links which you can use. Uh, we have a uh, British Council, yeah, where uh, we can also test our students' uh, level, so they can pick exercises according to their level. That's what I also did to my students as well. Uh, you, you also have the uh, learning teams, learning English for teams, and they also have the class. And they have different levels as well. So this one for speaking. Yeah. Uh, for instance, the topic here is buying new shoes, keeping your opinion. So it's really uh, on for <laughs> and for writing. So uh, this council provides a very good uh, platform for uh, studying the four skills, and uh, they are very very useful. If my daughter, I also asked her to take the task and see the level, and then do some exercises according to her level. So some other useful things, so you, you have oh, you have YouTube, uh, again, because you're learning English, or you can also have chat, uh, com. And thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.
Thank you for this. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Ibu Siti Nur Askia, for sharing the ideas how to teach uh, speaking and writing and uh, in a big era like this. Okay, uh, let's go to the next presenter. Ibu Puji Sri Rahayu that will explain uh, the ideas how to teach listening and reading right now. Okay, uh, Ibu Puji Sri Rahayu, time is yours. Thank you, Ibu Itai. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, Bapak Ibu. Uh, it's been an honor for me morning, to, share, to share here. And terima kasih untuk Bapak Muradi, Lembaga Bahasa, Ibu Itai, Bapak Jama. And also, I see Bapak Amin there. Apa kabar, Pak? Lama tidak ketemu. Uh, uh, I'm so happy to see familiar faces here. Uh, Ibu Asya, it's good to see you again after like uh, nine years. <laughs> Uh, okay. So yeah, so long. Uh, my topic today is uh, teaching, reading, and listening through online uh, online platform. There are four things. Uh, uh, sorry, let me share my screen. Yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, wait a second. I cannot do it, but it I. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, here we go. Yes, sir. It is running. Okay. Uh, so, uh, my topic today is about practices in teaching, reading, and also teaching listening. I'm going to uh, divide my presentation into four. The first, I'm going to talk about general principles of online learning, and then the second is teaching, reading, and also teaching, listening and then uh, possible activity and the last is tools and also useful resources in teaching reading as well as listening uh, yeah so we come to the first part of my presentation which is the general theory of online learning uh, Heraclitus, the Greek philosopher, once said that nothing is constant but change, and COVID-19 really changes everything. Uh, it's it's like a great shock for us. It's changed the way we teach in a classroom. Uh, it's also kind of changed the way we think about the uh, classroom. Uh, uh, the 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 change here is we have to move from traditional classroom to online classroom and not everybody uh, is ready for it. When some of the teachers that I talk to is kind of overwhelming. Myself, I've been practicing online learning for quite some time right now, uh, starting in 2016 and I use several platforms, but still it is overwhelming for me because it's quite sudden. And I believe that most teachers also think the same way. Uh, they start thinking when we have to, when we announce to the students we're going to have online classroom, uh, we start thinking what platform we are going to use, how to engage the students and others, and how to give feedback. Um, uh, the roles of the teachers is also different. Uh, when I see from my kids' uh, experience, it seems that the role of the teacher here giving assignments. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it is not because uh, they are lazy, no, not at all, because they have like a lot of things to do with only giving assignments, like giving feedback and everything. But then uh, we start thinking that uh, online classroom is like, it's like online assignments. That's what uh, many students think right now. Uh, Shifting to online learning also followed by shifting in pedagogy uh, and also teaching role. Quoting from Bapak Willy and Nadia, uh, online learning should be student centric. To be student centric, we cannot do like a lecture all the time. It's kind of silly if we want to lecture them all the time. Uh, it's also it should also be uh, should be personalization and then uh, like what Ibu Nurul Askia said, feedback, timely feedback is very important and it is what is like uh, currently. And the last is how we engage the student. So uh, online classroom should not be the burden for us, but it should be fun and fun and fun. It should be uh, for now. It must not 
uh, it wasn't the case because we like overwhelmed with that. Uh, in uh, if we follow the theory of community of inquiry, the online uh, the online uh, learning should uh, should be that should be the basis of teaching presence and then cognitive presence and also uh, social presence. And if we want to. Uh, uh, it is kind of the same with uh, forces in uh, forces in uh, skills. Let me see. So the, the forces in 21st century skill is also need a uh, uh, cognitive presence and also um, what is the social presence. When we de when we design our activity in all skills, uh, we need to make sure that it accommodates the uh, 21st century skill like the communication uh, and then collaboration, critical thinking, and also creativity. Well, uh, that's the general overview about uh, online course. And then uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the reading and listening. And why is it, why is reading and listening important? Ibu Nuru has already told us about uh, why speaking and why uh, writing is very important. But why reading and listening important? Because so far, when uh, we teach uh, reading and also we teach listening, students sometimes say that uh, that's boring. That's boring. But but this is very important. Let's have a look at the uh, the figure here. So. As we all are aware that listening and also reading uh, is receptive skill, while speaking and writing are uh, productive skill. If we have a look at the uh, the figure, the input, the input here, listening and also reading, uh, refers to the processing language the learners are exposed to while listening or reading, and it has uh, influence uh, much on their speaking and also also writing performance when they like to read a lot uh, and also they like to listen a lot automatically their vocabulary is uh, their vocabularies uh, also a lot but some of my students asked me how to master English how to be able to good in speaking how to be able to, uh, to be good in writing but when I told them that uh, you have to read a lot. You have to listen a lot and say, "Wah, susah, mom. Kalau harus membaca, they do not like reading at all. Even though uh, at schools, at schools, uh, junior high school, senior high school, they are, they uh, have to read a lot and also uh, learning grammar. But still, you know, they are not into the reading, listening. They like it, but listening song or uh, movie or whatever is that. But reading is still hard. Uh, reading is not uh, some of the students for uh, the uh, the output is really influenced by the input so uh, reading and listening is very important uh, okay there are interaction there now let's come to reading uh, I'm sorry Bapak Ibu uh, uh, heard about uh, intensive and also extensive reading. Intensive reading involves learners reading in specific learning aims and tasks. For example, uh, okay, the, the the task today is about uh, scanning or uh, inference or skimming, something like that. So with preface, while extensive reading involves learners reading text for enjoyment. So uh, enjoy, enjoy is the point here is very important here uh, would you help me to uh, I need you to answer this question so so far you have already known intensive and also extensive reading uh, which are you practicing now would you please write down in your chat box Okay, just wait for a moment. Kami akan menyalakan internet biar bisa dikirim semuanya ya. Okay, Ibu Ita, thank you. Okay, so you might send your answer. Yes, please. Which are you teaching? Intensive or extensive reading? Thank <laughs> you. 
and then encourage the development of listening strategies. And the last is input both uh, bottom up and top down listening technique. And I bet Bapak Ibu here uh, understand about that. Eh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to be quick. Possible activities and useful tools and resources. Here, uh, the first that we can do, we always think that reading and listening can go together. Listening, yeah, listening, reading, yeah, listening. But according to research, listening while reading or reading while listening actually foster the understanding of the uh, students. Uh, listening while reading, we can give them the, the the same the same text and the same audio. Jadi bukan uh, maksudnya bukan sambil mendengarkan lagu. No, so, uh, it means that we give them the text, but the text should be the same as the audio. Listening while reading, uh, like this uh, in the picture, there's a graffiti in subway. Uh, there is a level here, and there is a test before we uh, choose level one, level two, or level three. And choose the right level for us. This is level three, uh, graffiti and subway. And the audio here is also about graffiti, graffiti in subway. Another way is uh, we ask them to read something. For example, graffiti in subway. We also give them the audio after they read the graffiti in subway. We give them the audio, different one, but the same topic. The same topic after some times. And here is the. Uh, this is. The where I take the uh, source, uh, you can see. Uh, so it's good to uh, to help the students not only for the understanding but also for the pronunciation, for the pronunciation or how they read. Because sometimes when they read, they still have like a uh, mistake and how they pronounce it uh, or pronounce the word. After sometimes uh, we can also ask them to retell. Uh, retell, what we usually do is uh, we ask the student, okay, hey, tell me what the tell me what the reading about and tell me what the listening about. Oh, I'm really sorry, the activity here is doable for list reading as well as for listening. So we can just adjust later on. Uh, retell, this is the follow up. Uh, we can ask the student to retell, but once more, when we ask the student to retell, do not just uh, say, okay, tell me what the story about. We should give them the prompt. Jadi, there are several uh, several questions that will lead them to have the, the story in order. Uh, we can also have the activity like pecha pecha. We have doing this for several times in our uh, competition now. Pecha pecha. Uh, it's like a, it's like telling story, but with the uh, with the image. Jadi kita seperti bikin PowerPoint uh, with image with twenty. Uh, for example, twenty images in twenty seconds. In twenty seconds, so each each image they only need one second. Twenty images, twenty seconds. It is quite hard if they do not understand what they read and also what they listen. They have to find the images and then they have to talk about the image. So it's like combining the listening or reading with speaking. Uh, uh, this is the the. Uh, tools that we can do for Pecha Kucha. We can use screencast omatic or we can use screencastify or Loom uh, from Loom.com and Fieldgrip.com. I come across Fieldgrip like two weeks ago and it's very good. Instead of uploading in YouTube or Instagram, we can just uh, uh, upload it uh, in Fieldgrip, not upload, but the student can uh, directly uh, post the video in Fieldgrip. Trip. It's free, and also um, we can also ask them in retail. We can also uh, include writing there. Uh, we can ask them to make a poster presentation, poster presentation, and we can make the best of Canva.com, for example. And they have the template for presentation uh, for presentation, so they can tell us what they have already read and what they have already listened. Uh, tapi tidak mengambang karena we have the prompt for them. And then 
Next, we also uh, have collaborative notes. Collaborative note. Um, is actually uh, we usually do this when we do writing. But but yeah, this is combining uh, listening or reading with writing as well. We can do collaborative notes. For example, after they read uh, or they listen, they uh, we ask them to write the summary or write it in the script or whatever is that, and we group them. We group them. Uh, two or three and they start a uh, collaboration uh, using the apps there we have google doc actually there are many others not just google doc we also have stormboard which is great software is great uh, especially from brainstorming because everybody can write there uh, just for collaboration we try to include the four skill four c skills here and then we also can do online games online game with the student quizzes quiz like kahoot is uh we we are all familiar with with that uh, quizzes quiz like kahoot we do not have uh, we do not have to write our own um our own talks we can just choose from that but if we have certain purpose then we can create something in quizzes quiz like or kahoot uh lately i use the word word wall what wall net it's very good if kahoot and quizlet only have uh, several templates work wall uh, work wall work wall sorry uh, has like many templates we can do the spin wheel we can do the many other things uh, uh, let me uh, share my other screen
questions here and we can create our own questions if it is reading then we can ask uh, Uh, 
academic. So we just uh, uh, upload the video there and then we do the at puzzle.com and create uh, the questions. And we can share it through our Facebook. Kalau tidak pakai ini, share di Facebook saja. So, uh, students uh, love Facebook and also Instagram. We can share there. And then, pair and small group discussion. Uh, this is very, uh, what is it? Biasa ya. We do this all the time. But in the uh, in the season like this, in pandemic season like this, sometimes it is difficult for us to do pair small group discussion or small group discussion. Kita berpikir bagaimana melakukannya. But if you use Zoom, Zoom, uh, Zoom itu ada fasilitas for break room. So while we are online like this, when we are live, when we live like this, we can just split the room. Uh, we can split the room into several groups. For example, uh, five groups. Nanti ada sebenarnya ada tandanya kecil di sini ada kotak gitu itu yang bisa uh, kita break uh, break the group. Di sini ada tutorial untuk managing big room seperti apa. Nah, after big group them, they can uh, talk with their friends. Masih tetap di Zoom. Uh, they can talk with their friend tapi tidak terganggu dengan teman lainnya seperti mereka punya kamar-kamar tersendiri. Punya kamar-kamar tersendiri. Jadi seperti kita di kelas. And what about the teacher? Can the teacher uh, join them? Yes. So the teacher can move to one room to another room. Jadi kita bisa melihat mereka interaksi seperti apa we move from one room to another room and then after the time is up we have to limit the time after the time is up we can rejoin the big group and start sharing again if you use zoom we can do that we can do a pair or small group discussion it's manageable and then the last and uh, it's very important reflection reflection so uh, reflection is always uh, is sometimes uh, ignored in our teaching practice. Kita jarang melakukan reflection. Reflection is not only for the students but also for the teachers. But here is uh, it meant to be for the uh, for the students. Uh, they start reflect what they have already uh, done during the class, what they feel, what they uh, don't like, what they dislike. When we, they read something. Uh, What, what is something that they do not like from the book and do they uh, are they going to recommend the book for others or not so this kind of reflection and it's very important for them if they do not like the class or they do not like uh, the book or they do not like the uh, what can we do as the teacher to improve that what can we do that's very important uh, reflection for the teacher it will be nice to do the reflection uh, if we know what the students uh, The student difficulty, then we can set something, we can design something that uh, eventually will help the students. And these are the useful uh, and useful resources we have at Puzzle Den and then Field Grip and also lyric trainings. Lyric training is good for listening, and I'm sure that the student will love it. So when we open uh, this site, lyrictrainings.com, you will be uh, given the choice of songs, uh, most famous song, and then you can click them, and then you start filling the gap there. And it's very nice. Uh, the students, uh, I'm sure that the student will love it. Uh, lyrictrainings.com. And these are some useful resources for listening as well. English Listening Lesson Library Online and then BBC like Wok Ibu Nuru. Uh, BBC Learning English, British Council Audio. This is the this is the, uh, the link. And this is what I'm talking about, about the vocabulary, the vocabulary level. Uh, when we click uh, Lex Tutor, Lex Tutor uh, Test, Uh, we are going to be given the test. Jadi kita bisa milih tesnya. Kita mau tes yang vocabulary level berapa? Level 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000. Jadi we know uh, our level or we know the student level. And I think this will be good for the starting of the class. Jadi kalau kita mau memulai kelas, misalkan mengajar reading, kita tahu level student itu sampai seberapa. Jadi kita tidak memberikan, uh, we do not give the hard uh, reading for example. Jadi, it will be very beneficial for teachers as well as the students. And that's uh, that would be all for me. 
I really hope that it gives you something uh, for the next class. Uh, so this is my email address and blah blah. If you want to contact me, thank you, Ibu Itai. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Ibu Puji. I'm sure that we are here very excited to know this. Okay, well, let's move to the next. Uh, we are going to have discussion. Maybe the participant here.